is wire management. Um, yeah. You see a little bit of the trawl wire sticking out of the, uh, the winch right there, yeah. the vertical ship. Uh, <clears throat> if you take, uh, you, there's a trade-off uh, with Table steel wire. Um, if you harden it, you can get an enormous amount of strength out of it. Um, however, it becomes brittle. <laughs> Uh, so ordinary elevator cable, uh, the yield versus work, safe working load is about a factor of four. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the maximum load on an elevator cable is in the 20 percent <laughs> of, 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 you know. Uh, we, hard drawn steel, the problem when you put steel wire over the side, after a while, you, you have no payload left because uh, the, the, it's, you put 20 miles of steel wire over the side and it's, it's spending all its strength supporting itself. <laughs> and now you haven't got any weight on the payload. So this whole technology has grown up around uh, hard run uh, steel wire. This is so-called torque balance wire. You'll see it walking away to it in which the uh, stranding is, is, is one way for the cable and the other way so when you load it, it's torque balanced. It tends to unwind the two are, uh, uh, are is approximately equal. This was an invention of the Worcester Wire Works or U.S. Steel. Now defunct, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, uh, but rushed to Rope and Roanoke, Virginia is now the major provider of it. Your whole mess of patents. <laughs> patents have all run out, fortunately. <laughs> and, and but that was on, you're talking about this is interesting. That the patents on those were issued in the <clears throat> early 1970s. I mean, it was un inconceivable to me that that idea uh, uh, went. To, it was not an object. Somebody didn't figure that out in the 1900s. Uh, so, so the um, now this torque balance wire. Uh, you have the problem is that if I bend it too much, uh, it snaps to me. <laughs> and so there's a whole. Uh, so there's a prescribed shiv size that it has to go over. Uh, it's it's wound on the winch. I can take. If you want to crawl down, and I can show you the thing. Uh, with a perfect mechanical precision, there's a little company called uh, Levis uh, in England that makes these precision winds so that every lay is equal. If you go to run thread on a bobbin, if you have to tug it, if you bury a lay, no problem. If you bury a lay of steel wire, uh, you're going to bust it. <laughs> and so, uh, so here's an example of sort of taking materials at their extremity uh, to drive them to perform this uh, this needed function. So, and there's a and the so there's a long wire log that's kept. Uh, these th this wire can be made of, in, in, we, we buy it in uh, uh, 10,500 meter lengths. Uh, and um, it's made on a huge um, uh, set of carousels, one right behind the other. Uh, uh, and with a, each gondola has a strand of wire in it. And it goes through a big cabling system. And it's got an alarm on each one so that uh, uh, that as you get to the end of the wire, if the carousel stops, and then you put the next, you load the next load of wire. There's a but you butt weld, and so they can make wire in, in, infinitely long. <laughs> uh, but the usual shipment is uh, 10,500 meters, uh, and uh, and as the wire gets used, uh, depending uh, if the geologists are using it, you tend to chew up the bottom end <laughs> uh, because it gets mixed up in the rocks and so forth. Uh, and um, so there's a whole program of how long it's used. Uh, and again, this is another art form that sort of grew up uh, with people who became very comfortable and familiar with the whole business of, uh, uh, of, of taking a resource and, and pushing and pushing its, uh, its applicability. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> if not, let's.